Eric, what the hell is going on? We had a date half an hour ago. Chuck, I'm sorry. I don't like making a fool out of me. And why would you? You do such a good job of it yourself. Shut up, Rusty. <laughs> Will you be joining these ladies for dinner? When I say meet me today, what am I? Talking to myself? No, no, Chuck, you're right. Just calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. <laughs> don't ever tell me what to do. I know what your friends think of me, and that's bull. I'm the best party in this town, baby. And those three dogs ought to be tied up under the porch. Let's go. No. Get in the truck. No. Excuse me? I said no, and what part of that don't you understand? When you say no, you really mean yes. Leave me alone, Chuck. I believe the lady said no. And I believe this is none of your business. Friend, don't. Eric, who invited this clown? Oh, I'm sorry. We've never been formally introduced. Rand McCormick. Get your head out of my face. And get your face out of my sight. Hey, Chuck, you looking for a fight? Let's hug. <laughs> well, don't call me this job. I'll let it nail. I'll nail. What, think that's funny? Cranston, your pickup truck is in the handicapped parking spot. That's a spot we reserve for people with physical, not emotional disabilities. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen the last of me, McCormick. Could I please kick his butt? <laughs> <laughs> now what's that your mama says? Before you make a fist, make sure it's your fight. Yes, ma'am. Well, this is not your fight. Now that the rest of you have a curfew. Hey, McCormick. I don't know. I'll give him my skates. Listen to me. I'll see you here tomorrow after school. Really? So I'm not fired? Not yet. Now give me a push, honey. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you are either very brave or very stupid. What do you think? I haven't made up my mind yet. You want to see something? Don't you have a curfew? Oh, you're right. Please, my dad invented it. And besides, don't you think rules were made to be perfect? Come on. Till I get on board and leave Beaumont. Try. No thanks, I just ate. You really are something, you know. What do you mean? I mean the whole package. Minister's kid, Chuck Cranston's girlfriend. Guilty. Just a church going gal and a pair of badass red cowboy boots. My daddy hates me wearing these boots. And you just love that, don't you? Getting up in his face. I wait he'll notice when I'm gone. Are you gonna go? College. For starters, I've applied to some places my dad doesn't even know about. I want to speak five languages and see the world. He wants me to teach English Lit in Baylor County. They don't even speak English in Baylor County. <laughs> I couldn't picture you as a teacher. Thanks. Neither can I. I'll leave that to my dad. Well, he's a preacher, not a teacher. When you're good at it, it's the same thing. And he used to be real good. Well, what happened? His mind. He closed it. Yeah, I noticed. He used to be so open and so inspiring. I saw him give hope when hope was gone. I watched him change lives. Well, if you love him so much, why do you want to take him off? I didn't say that I love him. Oh, I know, I know what you mean. My dad. Yeah, what happened there? One day he just walked out. No goodbye. <laughs> Nothing. Bet you got lots to say to him. Lots. Like what? No, I couldn't. <laughs> Come on, tell it to the train. I do. Someday. Someday? What do you mean someday? 
got a feeling you've been kissed a lot. I'm afraid I'd suffer by comparison. You don't think much of me, do you? Well, I think of you a lot more than I expected. Come on.
kind of? It's nothing. I Please, was... don't waste your breath or my time on another lame excuse. It's not an excuse. After Red brought me home so last night, some guys jumped him. They just started wailing on him. There was like six of them. It was three guys. Anybody you know? Well, I didn't take names. That's what you mean. McCormick, it seems that we're not making trouble. It finds you anyways. And Ariel, I would encourage you to stay away from this guy. I've been asked to keep my eye on you. Oh, right? so my father called you. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And if you cooperate, it will make all our lives much easier. Gee, if my daddy makes a phone call, will you get off of my back? That mouth of yours has probably made your daddy walk out of you in the first place. <laughs> Count to ten, man. Mom says, just count to ten. <laughs> you can watch and take your friends away. Ariel, get back to practice. McCormick, get down and give me thirty. You're joking, right? You're right, make it fifty. Grant, he's really hurting, coach. <laughs> Thank you for your diagnosis, Dr. Willard. You can give me fifty as well. Really? As a matter of fact, all of you can give me 50, courtesy of Mr. <laughs> Just do it. One, two, I can't hear you. Three, four. Only 46 more. Five, six. Is he gone? Seven, <laughs> eight. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Red, thanks a lot. I'm sorry, it's just, this whole damn town is so wound up. Hey, man. You guys have no place to blow off any steam. You said it. And at least in Chicago we could go to the clubs. Hey, maybe we should take the coach dance and... <laughs> we'll leave you already so. That's it. What? We're gonna throw a dance. We're gonna throw a party to Knox Beaumont right off its track. You're just looking for a fight. Hey, bring it up. Are you ready to take on Reverend Moore? I'll take on anybody. What about the town council? I'll fight City Hall. If there's one thing we're fighting for, it's freedom.
to remind ourselves this law is not about dancing. This law is a tribute. A tribute to the four young people who held the promise of Beaumont's brightest future.